Let's move on to bike safety in the park with Officer Dallas Williams and Three Rivers Park Officer Danny McCullough. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the required safety equipment uh, that you will need to, uh, to operate your bike. Um, of course, one thing you want to have and should have always is a helmet. Um, one thing you want to do is when you're wearing your helmet is not only make sure you have a helmet, but make sure it fits properly. Uh, a helmet that doesn't fit you doesn't really do you any good. When you put your helmet on, you want to make sure that the helmet fits level on your head. You don't want the helmet too far forward or too far back. You also want to make sure you attach your chin strap pretty tight. Once you want it to be pretty snug. And uh, a good test that I like to do before I go ride to make sure my helmet's fitted properly is just rock your head back and forth like this. And if, if you get a lot of play in your helmet, that means your helmet's too loose. So you need to tighten your straps up or you may even have the wrong size helmet. Another thing that's, that you're going to need is, that is required by state law if you're riding at night, you must have uh, a headlight. Um, on the front of your bike and that headlight has to be visible from about 500 feet away which is the average size of a city block. So you want to make sure you have a headlight if you're riding at night and you also want to make sure that you have a rear red reflector. Um, you can also have a blinking red light which works even better but both those things, the headlight and the rear reflector or rear flashing light are required for riding at night. This is a great way to add reflective gear to your body to create sort of a signature at night to let motorists know that you are actually a cyclist. And when they see that leg moving or the reflectors on your wheels turning, that indicates to the motorist, hey, there's a bicyclist ahead. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some of the, the most important rules of the road when operating a bicycle in traffic. Uh, the first thing I'd like to go over is using hand signals. Um, all cyclists are required by law to use hand signals when they are operating a bicycle in traffic on a street. Um, I want to demonstrate real quick what those hand signals are. If you're going to make a left turn, obviously this is the left hand turn signal. If you want to make a right turn, this is the proper right hand turn signal. And if you want to come to a stop or you're slowing, you want to use the stopping symbol like this. So those are the three hand signals you want to use when you're operating in motor vehicle traffic. Another really important rule of the road is always remember when you're operating on a street, you have to abide by the same rules and laws that motor, that motor vehicles do. So when you approach a red light, you have to stop at a red light. When the red light turns green, you have to go. When you approach a stop sign, you have to stop at the stop sign. In other words, you have to operate just as a motor vehicle does in traffic. When you're riding your bicycle on the street, you always want to ride, of course, on the right side of the road. You never want to ride against traffic. It's very important because drivers do not have time to react in case they need to get out of your way, and they're not expecting, expecting to see you coming toward them in the wrong lane of traffic. Another point I'd like to make also is when a motor vehicle is passing a cyclist, by law, they have to give that cyclist three feet of space as they're passing. Okay, now I want to talk to you a little bit about trail safety and, and how to operate when you're when you're riding your bike on a trail such as this one. When you're passing another cyclist on the trail, in other words, you're moving faster than them and it is clear to pass, make sure you tell them I'm passing on your left. Uh, a lot of cyclists even carry a bell on their handlebars to let that other cyclist know that they're going to be passed. So you should express that courtesy to the other cyclist. And most importantly, are intersections such as this one. When you're operating a bike on a trail, you must obey the signs on the trail. So if you come to an intersection like this with a stop sign, you are required by law to stop at that intersection. As you can see, we're here at Beltline Boulevard where the uh, South Cedar Lake LRT trail crosses. And obviously it's marked with a stop sign. And we've actually added this sign here that says cross traffic does not stop. So at this intersection, if you're a cyclist, you must come to a stop. If there is traffic approaching this intersection, by law, you are supposed to stay right here. You are not allowed to cross that intersection until it is clear. The Minnesota state law uh, actually states that a pedestrian or a cyclist shall not make any sudden moves into the street when crossing an intersection with oncoming traffic. So you have a responsibility to only cross the road when it is clear of traffic. The flip side of that is the motorists have a responsibility as well. As they approach a crossing like this, if there is already a pedestrian in the street, in the crossing, 
they are required by law to stop. Otherwise, if there are no pedestrians in the, cro in the crossing, by law, at this intersection, the motorists can continue through. They do not have to stop until there's actually someone present in that intersection. One of the biggest problems we have is confusion, not only among the cyclists, but the motorists. Both will approach the intersection, and oftentimes neither one, neither party knows exactly what to do. Um, so this creates a dangerous situation, because as a cyclist is stopped, the motorist thinks they have to stop to let the cyclist cross, and then oncoming traffic behind that motorist could either run into the back of that stopped motorist, or worse yet, go around that motorist as the pedestrian or the cyclist is crossing the trail crossing, which of course can create a bad accident. We have two trails crossings we're most concerned about in St. Louis Park. One at Wooddale and the other at Beltline. Please use caution when you're going through these intersections.